Hello there. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave this in just to show you guys how I can stuff up on an... Uh, just how I can stuff up on an intro. And we usually like to do these one take, so I'm going to keep it in. Ladies and gentlemen, we are up to the final trilogy. The last three episodes of the Sopranos series. The holy trinity of episodes. Let's see if they live up to the hype. What's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film student. He from Sydney, Australia. Absolutely shooting his shot. And we are up to episode 19 of the Sopranos season 6. This one is titled, The Second Coming. No diddy. Let's get into the reaction. Let's have some fun with this thing. And let's absolutely smash it. Let's go. I've always admired how The Sopranos never like begins with like a like a pre um, intro scene, like before the credits start to roll at the beginning, like a pre credit screen uh, scene. Sorry, this chucks you straight into the intro, and then you know you're gonna get 50 minutes of quality TV. Again with the asbestos, what the heck? All right, things with Phil are heating up. This 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 is gonna get out of control. I'm just calling it right now. You cannot dump asbestos in the Meadowlands or wherever you just dumped it, fam. Woo! The transition rollover with AJ in bed. Tossing and turning. We're gonna get an AJ episode this one. So loud, the hell you get? Catch me riding dirty, gonna catch me riding dirty, trying to catch me riding dirty. What a banger! Chameleon, baby! Yeah, I was about to say, Tony gonna wake up to that. <laughs> Mysterious package postmarked Las Vegas. Oh, 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 shit, Tony. Oh, Baum and Mercier. Okay, I thought it might have been from the gill, and I was oh like, Oh my god, this is so beautiful. I had it engraved. Hey, you are my life, love T. They couldn't fit Tony. I believe that. <laughs> Thank you. The and perks of this life, work. huh? Well, like I said, I was sorry I had to go out to Vegas when I did. As you explained, you had to take care of Christopher's business interests. God knows Kelly will need the money. Baby. Bobby? John Stefano. You touching asbestos? No, I don't work with that shit. It's okay. I still can't get over Dominic Toretto's friend. <laughs> Get these bozos, Ecuadorians, bunch of them Polacks. How come they ain't wearing their spacesuits? That's a union rule. If I couldn't run this job without that fucking contract, ain't none of us gonna make any real scratch. You don't got an envelope? <laughs> Sloppy work. Before. Your friends beating up the African kid. Why do you think that's been impossible to shake? At least he's had my back after all the shit with Blanca. At least he's expressing that stuff. At least he's telling it to the therapist. Like, thank you, AJ. I feel like AJ really wants to act on what happened last episode with the African individual. Um, but at the same time, I feel like he's saying right here, they had my back with Blanca. He's too afraid to speak out and stand up for himself. But I don't know if that's a situation as well where it's really highlighting that he doesn't belong in the culture um, of his father. Like he's never going to live up to his father in that sort of um, limelight, like of, of the mafia, which I'm like, I don't care. Like, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Like, AJ, go do your own thing, man. I know you're really depressed at the moment. Go do your own thing. Go leave that culture. Stop hanging around and stop being um, around that cancer of a culture with those kids and stuff like that. Now they care about me. Did you... They care about your name. Beating? I'm one individual. Right, what could I do? Have you considered writing about your experience with the Somali boy? A short story, perhaps. Why would I do that? It might help clarify your feelings. I was watching CNN. 
the story about these kids in some Iraqi hospital. Now the burn unit doesn't have the right medicine or something. I, I still think AJ would have benefited of having like from having Melfi as a therapist. Now I haven't posted that episode yet in terms of me putting that question out to you guys, but I still think I don't know. I feel like Melfi, I don't know, would have just connected, like, or just a female therapist. Not the one Meadow went to, not that one, not that hack of a, whatever. I'm just saying, like, Melfi, I think, would have approached it just a different way than this guy. I'm not sure about this guy therapist. He's very interesting. He seems very, he's like, he's like another early Melfi and says, like, he's very curious about this boy's mind. Like, I don't know. And then they show this story about some mall in Minnesota. These gigantic fat people buying stuff. And eating all this shit. You know, it's like my parents. You should see our house. And the stupid coffee maker they got. Media room. You know, then there's Blanca. Questioning everything about life. Talks. Again with this she season. can't afford to send him to a decent school. You think your feelings about Blanca in any way relate to this African boy? She's not black. I mean, she's pretty tan. How do you clean practically anything? Third edition. Really, Sylvia? Oh, <laughs> there he is. Back to me, man. Welcome back, Tom. How was your trip? Great. Had a fucking blast. Yeah? On business, too. Uh, Christopher shit. Some fucking guys out there owe the money. Little Carmine took it on the Cleaver set. We had it framed. <laughs> Big up, Little Carmine. Talk about My guy trip. in action. I met this girl. Fucking beautiful. Oh, yeah. We did peyote. Come on. Really? Why we did mushrooms once? Stuff mushrooms. Oh, fucking platter. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <huh? laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's some nutty shit. The desert. The light. I did X once. That fucking was incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're kidding off the fucking charts. You won't believe it. Really? And the sun <laughs> came up. <laughs> the sun so came up indeed. He didn't have an envelope. Are you moving on that? Uh, we should probably uh, see Phil. I got those with answer once. Back at 68. I was with your dad and them at the Copa. Fucking BOAC steward has put it in my drink. Jerry Vale started singing and I look over. Your Uncle June's got laser beams shooting out his eyes. I used to love that house, but now... It's so big. Kelly. Especially at night. I can be the father to step up. I will be the father that stepped up. I'll take you to Hawkins. I'll take you to the Upside Down. So come good. on. We will have Mike Wheeler. Like, come on. And Nancy and everything. We'll have a big happy family. You know they spray virus on beef rather than clean the rat shit out of the slaughterhouses? What is this now? Jesus Christ. He's questioning sure. everything about the world, man. Like... I don't read the paper. I have heard that. I feel like he'd be a good, like, about the sports page. uni lecturer in terms of, like, a in specific FDA, subject. They Critical thinking. The virus spray because it kills a similar bacteria found on meat. Must be a good thing then. We're trying to eat here and you're upsetting people that have been through a tragedy. No reminder. Fine. Bury your head in the sand. How about I bury yours in that fucking wall instead? <laughs> 20 years you won't crack a book. All of a sudden he's the world's foremost authority. <laughs> Such a... Dad response, I'll bury your head in that fucking wall instead. At least he's getting an education. An education to help you get a better job. Well, he's actually reading. This can't be bad. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere, the ceremony of innocence... The second coming. Surely, some revelation is at hand. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body... In the head of a man. Yo, who is that teacher? Blank I need to find out just for research purposes. Is moving its low thighs. Still? You got a minute? I'd like to show you some pictures. Angelina Jolie, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> is this the first time? This must be really desperate here from Agent Harris. Because I feel like this is the first time we've seen this sort of 
um the the butchery or so like this this cafe we've seen it at night it's it's at night here um and it's very interesting that they're using the dutch angle as well with tony's ladies and gentlemen yep that's him at least he put you on to what i don't know financing maybe maybe yeah. honestly i'm not even sure we still have him in the country thanks for stopping by Next time we'll have party hats. <laughs> there we go. Not even a kiss, not even... They're just bowing down to him. <laughs> Your nephew's widow. She get my flowers? Why, well, if you sent him, I'm sure she did. Well, I won't expect to thank you anytime soon. The grieving process, it takes time the closer you are to somebody. Yeah, I know. So, breast tax. What brings you all the way out to the city? Well, good news. The condo's at the Navy Yard. Polish guy at the joint fitters says they're breaking ground. Well, that is good. Good. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, this asbestos. I thought about your offer. What do you say, to 15%, plus we forget about the balance, uh, what you owe me on the vitamin truck? First off, it wasn't an offer. Oh, my God. It's my position. 25%. That's it? What else would you like me to say? Come on, Phil. Well, what's the problem? I come here in good faith. I make a reasonable account. Which I considered and rejected. Do we need to talk in private? For what? Yo, this man, I swear, like, I'm just saying, where did all this end? Like, I guess, is this like the energy that comes with a boss? Like, he just brought a different type of energy. Like, Johnny Sack was at least reasonable and there was some friendship established. But I feel like that sort of Tony Blundetto cousin situation, Tony of Sony Soprano thing, that is, like, Phil is holding against, uh, Phil's holding Tony against that for life. Like, that is a, that that is never going away until you, like, root out the entire New York side. <laughs> like, I just feel like you need to weed out that entire problem. That's not going away. Um, and it, it's interesting to see the negotiations, how different they are um, from the earlier Sopranos to now the season six Soprano. It's completely unhinged. Like, they're not even greeting each other, kissing each other like they usually would. Um, and one man, Phil, sitting alone at the table, has got the whole New Jersey in front of him, and or like all, one, like most of the main boys from New Jersey, he's not even budging. He's not even budging. like he's just he's he's like it's not. I feel like it's no longer New Jersey in New York. It's like it's like it's just New York. That's how Phil sees it. I control everything. You guys are below me. It's like like I said, the rule book has been completely thrown out. There is no nego like Phil's like. 25%, that's it, that, that's it, that's, I'm not moving, I'm not budging, he's dictating the orders now, and I'm not sure Tony is gonna, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure Tony's gonna abide by that for very long, and we've got three episodes left, so I doubt he's gonna suck this up for much longer, and there's gonna be bloodshed, it's gonna be absolutely mental, it's gonna be crazy. Okay, then, in front of everybody. This guy, I'm too. Sick. In the hospital. We talk understanding about life this is business Anthony yeah I know but I'm talking to you here on a human level <laughs> there's a limit Phil come on point where business bleeds into other shit feelings make things financially unfeasible Charles Schwab over here <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. No leeway, no compromise, just stupid fucking jokes. You want compromise? How's this? 20 years in the can. I wanted manic art. I compromised. I ate grilled cheese off the radiator instead. I wanted to fuck a woman, but I compromised. Yo. I jacked off in a tissue. And came out of the closet. See where I'm going? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's he full sending it, Phil, now. He's like, 20 years in the can. I'm ending it on the bang. We saw that episode, how he looked up at the pictures on the wall. He wants to leave that legacy, man. Butch, Coco, did anybody call you guys? About what? Don't tell me the fucking checks are late. Motherfucker. I'm sorry, guys. Somebody really should have called you. That guy does not deserve that. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh. Oh. Whoa, whoa! 
Mate, it's enough. Oh, come on, it's not his fault. Oh, yeah? Maybe it's your fucking fault. Call the police! Really, you're gonna rob the man's wallet? Tony Soprano owes you three hundred and twenty dollars. That that little guy, oh, Buff and Coco, the little Chihuahua. Oh my gosh! Hi. I was just watching Borat on cable. You can watch <laughs> a thing fifty times, and it's still hilarious. It's okay. He brings that lady his shit. <laughs> it wasn't fair to the people involved. You loved it when it came out. What do you want, Meadow? Wait, where, where, where's this How pessimistic outlook on life, man? I'll take it. Hey, leave that. Okay? Thank you. So hostile, man. I'm your sister. You have to talk to me. He's contemplating, man. Is like still about Blanca? He's contemplating life. I just feel like... You know, I don't know anymore. AJ has those dark thoughts. Where I am I? Where am I going? What am I doing? The Tony when thoughts on AJ. When I split, I cried every day for like a month. You realize we're going to bomb Iran? <laughs> you don't know that. You watch. And Bush, before he leaves office, and you know I'm right. Okay. You need to learn to shut stuff out. Are you crazy? I mean, do you hear what we're talking about? You say that, but I come in here and you're surfing the web for porn. It's not porn. Al Jazeera? Don't you ever feel like there's no point to any of this? Here we go again. Why don't you try setting goals for yourself? Maybe you should move out. All right, in my condition. I mean, I can't hold a job. Jesus, AJ, there has to be something you can do. Look, I'm ill, Meadow. And I'm on medication. Millions of people take Lexapro. I need mom's cooking. It could mess with my blood chemistry. Did mom and dad know you dropped out? No. I don't know this kid them. anymore. It's so frustrating. I took time off, remember? They broke my balls, but it really wasn't so bad. Of course not. But, like, eventually you have You're to take initiative, best. like... We're Italian, AJ. You're their son. Do you have any idea what that means? You'll always be more important. Yo! You're awake. Now, with the with the title, The Second Coming, does, like, obviously there's the biblical reference of the second coming of Jesus and things like that. But at the same time, is the second coming referring to Tony as well? Again, with that father concept this season. Is Tony the second coming as like in the second coming of The Soprano, the next boss after his father? You know, the sun came up last episode. The sun rises. Tony rises after Johnny Soprano. Now as well, could it also refer to the second coming in terms of like the future being AJ? Is he next to replace Tony? Clearly not because he hasn't groomed him that way. He hasn't brought him into that lifestyle. Um, traditionally in mafia type stuff, like, you know, little Carmine and Carmine Senior, little Carmine would probably have been next to take the reins because he was involved in the game he was involved in everything um but aj has strayed away from that and tony's always tried to keep that type of life separate from the kids um and yeah aj's clearly not the second coming for tony and it probably was christopher up until what happened um and i feel like he gave up on christopher a long time ago but yeah interesting with the titles this show man it's like multiple meanings all the time i made lincoln log sandwiches maybe later just talked about mom's cooking. I am meeting Gab for lunch, and then we are stopping at Nordstrom's. If you go out, make sure you set the alarm. Okay? I feel like AJ's done, man. Like... Oh my gosh, she's gonna try commit.
No one's home as well. Come on, come to the side of the pool. To the side of the pool. Lucky Tony's pulling up. Oh my gosh. Also, what's in the box with the Kuzumanos? They still got the box, right? <laughs> Genie Kuzumano. No hesitation. You probably thought that were for him, left by Carmelo. Whenever Tony says, what the fuck, it's like the best delivery ever. Yo, this AJ scene right here is up there with the employee of the month Melfi scene in terms of like how hard to watch it is. What's wrong with you? Get him settled. You can come tomorrow during visiting hours. I love you, sweetie. Look how pale and white you. he's looking. Oh, he's had a lot of value. Almost a ghost. He needs help for a while and like. But he was better for a while. No, he wasn't. Look, it's not your fault. But you warned us. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, but I feel like if you're talking about whose fault, I feel like the parents are partly to blame. You guys can say, Ellie, you're wrong. But in terms of how they raised the kid, in my opinion. Maybe all to blame. It's going to be okay. It will, Mom. But he was always so happy. He was a happy little boy. <laughs> Hard scene to watch, man. Hard scene to watch. Hey, no white walls. There he is. You hungry, T? You want to send the kid for my job fresh? I did for Phil. Yeah, not yet. We got the cleaver poster up. All right, let's dispense with the 500 pound elephant in the room, huh? My kid tried to offer himself. We all fucking know.
That's it. Nobody's got nothing to say. How's he doing, Tom? They got him under observation. Whatever the fuck that means. What did I do wrong? Oh, come on. Don't blame yourself, T. A lot of pressure on kids today, Tom. Still to try to kill himself? It happens, Skip. Happen to your kids? Or yours? They're all different, Tom. My son, Patrick, I love him to death. But he could be a moody prick sometimes. Heather, you know, she was 15. She went through a rough patch. Jason, same thing. And he's got the hyperactivity to boot. My son, too. The older one, James. He tried to kill himself? No, no, no. I, I, I don't know. It gets the blues. The important thing is, AJ's getting the help he needs. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's a chemical imbalance. It's me. It's all these toxins they're exposed to. It fucks with their brains. <laughs> Between the mercury and fish alone, it's a wonder there ain't more kids jumping off bridges. That's that. That's that would be like an AJ response from Paulie right there, talking about the toxins and chemicals. And notice how they're all talking about their kids right there, but obviously Paulie because he's got he can't speak up about that situation. Usually Paulie's the first to speak about a situation like that. Tony gonna want to drain the pool. <laughs> I can't fucking shake it. Shake what? I'm depressed. Excuse me. I'm depressed. I'm telling you, don't you start now. What does that mean? It means what it means. I have enough on my plate. I don't need you adding to it with your bullshit. bullshit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's an illness. And it's fucking hereditary. Thank you, I know. I am intimately acquainted with the Soprano curse. Your father, your uncle, your great-grandfather who drove the donkey cart off the road in Avellino, all of it. Right on! You think it's a joke? Am I laughing? What are, what are you saying? Yo, that eyeliner with Carmella, the black eyeliner. Ooh, I see a different. Get it from my family. That's all I'm gonna say. Whoa! Your family don't even talk. Your father's so bottled up, it's a wonder he's even got a stomach left. Yeah, as opposed to yours. At least my father was out front about what was bothering him. Right, with a bullet through your mother's beehive hairdo. Oh, I knew it. I was wondering how long it was gonna take for you to throw that up at me. You're amazing, you know that? In high school, you were the happy-go-lucky rascal. The comedian, the rap scallion. But all of that was bullshit, wasn't it? Got married under false pretenses. You've been playing the depression card until it is worn to shreds. And now you've got our son doing it. Card? Card? You heard me. Oh, so it's all me, huh? Our sonny boy. You had nothing to do with it. It wears you down, Tony. Both y'all. I'm saying. Both y'all equal to blame. Any idea what it's like to spend day after day with somebody who is constantly complaining? Bananas and pajamas, B1 and B2, both y'all. Fuck you. Oh, oh my, you know those videos where you duck your head? <laughs> I thought I was going to go into the camera lens. Could have been a cry for help. Aren't you listening? He did cry for help. It's lucky I came home and heard him. I meant the botched attempt. Yes. On some level, he may have known that the rope was too long to keep him submerged. Or I could just be a fucking idiot. Historically, that's been the case. Yo, I'm not taking the rap. Not completely. She coddled him, his mother. I said it before. Every little problem, she's right there to pick him up and wipe off his tears on her apron strings. Children need to feel safe. And I'm sure that made him into the man he is today. Are you ashamed of him? Yeah, hey, actually, I am. Coward's way out. Isn't that what they call it? I think whoever said that didn't understand depression. But you do, don't you? Damn! And the guy says that Excuse me. You're Tony Soprano's kid, right? Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Small world running into you oh, like this, Oh, shit. Huh? Oh, sorry, do I know this you? guy's gonna get... Yeah, you got a little cream on your mouth there, sweetie. Oh, shit. Be happy to add This you. guy just signed his death warrant. Lucky this... guy, her dad. Must be fun talking to her at night, Oh, uh, right? bro, brother, you do not know what you have just done. Not yet. Would you like one? Bro, I'll fucking whoop oh. your ass, bro. What? Get I'm that McDonald's hairline out of here. Let's go. 
A festier dad, huh? <laughs> oh, you just... Oh, that's, that's it. That's it. It's on. It's on. It's war time. <laughs> it's done. It's done. Oh, my... Nah, man. I was like, you know those situations that you just like, no, you know, you know? Like, nah. It's over. What the hell was that? That's that soprano name again. Meadow, get the F out of here. But that is not for you to decide. Don't say anything. What, are you two talking about me again? Yes. See how fearful Meadow looked? Nothing. When she looked up to that dude? What? Do you know a guy named Coco? Why? She was out on a date last night and he came over and pulled some crap. What? That's it. It's on site. It's on the construction uh, site. It's on site. We're in the city, Little Italy, and we were having dessert and he came up out of nowhere and just started saying all this weird stuff. What kind of weird stuff? How he liked to tuck me in at night, stuff like that. Tuck you in? What exactly did he say? Oh. Oh. He came up to us and he asked me if I was her daughter. And then he said I had whipped cream on my mouth. Bro, it's on site. Yeah? It's it's on the what biggest did he say? It's on the biggest site possible. Like it's over. Like this <laughs> I cannot comprehend. This is It's alright. It's okay. He's an idiot. But he's harmless. Oh, he about to be harmless. I'll talk to somebody. So, this boy you're dating, this man, who is he? Can you promise not to start with an inquisition? Will you stop with all the secrecy, please? I love I love how when the camera pulls focus or, or cuts back to Carmela, she's in focus, but you can still hear the overpowering breathing of Tony, who's at, and the camera pulls focus to Carmela, and Tony's out of focus, but I can see his faith, uh, face, and I can... I, it's almost as if like I'm we're in his mind as the audience and we know the thoughts he's going through. Like I wouldn't be surprised if there's a cut to Tony walking in on the Bing and telling all the boys, let's get up, let's go to New York right now, or he's going to New York by himself, he's gonna John Wick the thing. That's it, it's war, it's on site. In terms listen, Tony is an unforgivable individual, but I'm supporting his sort of vendetta against New York. Mafia or mafia, I do not care. I, I'm on Tony's side. F the New York boys. But that is nah, that's a that's that's a broken rule book. That that is if there's a rule book, that's like shattered. That's not oh no. It's Patrick Parisi, okay? Oh. Oh You're kidding me. That's exactly why I didn't want to tell you oh. guys and why he didn't tell Uncle Patsy. Oh, you dating Uncle Patsy's kid? I thought he wait, where are you going? I didn't realize hey. that. Chill. We have Vogel later, don't forget. Oh Vogel can wait. I thought Pat Parisi was engaged. They broke it off. Woo! When he kind of hooked up at the Cleaver premiere, he started talking. He's changed a lot. Get out of the family, Meadow, please. Not Pat Parisi, he bad. a big mystery all this time. I knew you and Daddy never liked him. No, it's not that we didn't like him. It's just... So all those times you told me you were staying with your friend Kimmy in the city, I suppose you were staying at his apartment. Sometimes. Parisi, man, that's bad. But there's something else. I've decided not to go to med school. What? Why? Oh, it's just too hard. Isn't anything that's worthwhile? Oh, you have no idea. Of course not. Don't get sarcastic. Coward's way out. I really think it's law for me. Oh, okay, that's fine then. You should hear Patrick talk about the justice system and what it means. That's all right, that's all right. It's really inspiring. I think she's going for law. Like, it's not like she gave up on everything. Law's fine! Oh. I feel like this is the first time. Have we ever seen Melfi in the waiting room going to Elliot's office? No one looks. The transference to me of her issues with her mom. This is such and a great episode. Says maybe I should put my shoe up her ass. Bombshell on, bombshell on, bombshell on, bombshell. Mine says that. Mine, Elliot. Your favorite patient. Of mine. <laughs> the one you're watching on the news, boy. He hasn't been in the paper much lately. You miss that, don't you? Anyway, she told me something interesting. A lot of studies about talk therapy as it relates to sociopaths. Doesn't work. Animals. It doesn't One work. One of them is the criminal personality conducted by Yoshelson at uh, St. Elizabeth's. Essentially, it concludes 
that talk therapy... Here we go. ...while not only being useless with sociopaths, actually serves to validate them. Melfi just... Yoshelson says they sharpen their skills as con men on their therapists. Crocodile tears, what have you. Bombshell again for Melfi. I'm not. Oh, really? We showed data. The one-year reconviction rates were higher for offenders in therapy than for those receiving no treatment at all. This motherfucker is smug, man. Again. Is he basically telling Melfi, you did all that for nothing with Tony? Everything you did was useless? Okay, here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Easy. Okay, he took it on his own initiative. Tony, you're making a big fucking mistake here. Sit your ass down, boy. Better put a bullet in your fucking head, huh? Oh, no. Curb stop. Oh, shit, the tooth. You want some? Yo, take the tooth as a souvenir, man. You know, it's always what you think, isn't it? It's ever how I feel. Poor you. It's all your mother's fault, isn't it? I didn't say that. You're a mama's boy. You're going to call me names now? No one is calling anyone any names. Well, how about my confirmation? You called me an animal. I did not. I was in the garage. And you said, what kind of animal smokes marijuana at his confirmation? He was using illegal drugs in the home. Now, did it ever occur to you that I might have been self-medicating? Give me a break, will you? Self-medicating. Get your ass second grade. You made me show up to school in that dorky raincoat. I got beat up because of it. You would hole up in that room for you hours. Oh, he's the tooth. Because I was never really secure expressing my feelings in that house. You know, that's why. And what kind of poem is that to teach college students? I feel like this is one of the first times I've ever seen in The Sopranos where usually um, the camera work in terms of like a therapy session is adopted in a way where it's like, okay, we're going to use this side in this therapy session um, and only use camera angles or use camera placement from this side of the room. Now in this one, what I found interesting is that there was a section right here where it was all on one side. Can you call me names now? No one is calling anyone any but names. But then the camera changed to this. You called me an animal. I did not. I was in the garage. And you said, what kind of animal smokes marijuana at his confirmation? He was using illegal drugs in the home. Now, did it ever occur to you that I might have been self-medicating? Give me a break, will you? There's a, yeah, there's a cut here where it's like a high-angled camera shot from the left-hand side of the room. Oh, sorry. If we're, if say we're from Tony's perspective, the camera was only typically on Tony's left-hand side, this therapy session, and it always, they pick one side, but then it changed here, um, to the right-hand side of Tony, and it's like this high-angle camera shot looking down, it's like a beautiful wide shot here of all of them in the group therapy session, and then after this, it's almost as if free reigns, they're like, they're using the whole room, or they're using the camera in any placement, I find it very interesting, I feel like it's one of the first times they've ever done it. How about second? Or David Chase has done it. You made me show up to school in that dorky raincoat. I got beat up because of it. This therapist probably thinks this family is effed up. up. in that room for hours. Do you like to tell your parents what your grandmother said? My mother? Oh, not Livia? Dad's mom. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. What'd she say? That it's all a big nothing. What is? Life. Even her words were imprinted sure, on AJ, right? man. At such a young age, you don't want to be... Fine, she said those kinds of things. She sat up in bed. You don't want to be... Hardly move. You don't want to be... hardly breathe. 
That's the worst time to experience that as a kid. End, that your friends and family let you down. From the worst person you possible. Die in your own arms. When was this? When she was in that nursing home. And you used to make me go see her. The most pessimistic person in probably the history of life <laughs> you go to as a kid. Too young to be grandpas. I'll see you later, Skip. We should have dinner. You know, calm, Donna, maybe the kids. Oh my gosh. I hear wedding bells are in the air. <laughs> the mediator. <laughs> you want it then? No, I'm good. We had this terrific psychologist. She tried to kill herself, your daughter? No. She had serious problems, though, didn't she? Not really. It's all under control. Oh, it's still terrible. The reason I'm here, you could probably guess. What happened at Coco's restaurant? This alteration you had with him. You're at the precipice, Tony, of an enormous crossroad. Phil's considering shutting down the Hackensack Mall project with the plumbing strike as we speak. Well, fuck it. Let him. Easy for you. I have the scaffolding contract. Oh, is that what this is about, Carmine? What do I owe you? You know me better than that. My daughter. Come on, my daughter. You got a little girl. You almost killed the guy. I oh, he's not dead? Him. I would wow. have total support, but I held myself back. You were being prudent. Fuck that. I lost it. But I feel like in the... In Simon couldn't have been worse, but what the fuck? So you go to Phil. I go with you. Hats in hand. Bend the knees. I need I want to bend anymore, man. Bill needs to understand, bro. Your daughter was like... I feel like if this was early... Like I said, earlier season Sopranos, that guy's getting whacked. That, that shit ain't taken. People have got whacked for less. For way less. Like, what the heck? Going up and touching a mate... Like, a boss's daughter like that and making those remarks. Like I said, Johnny Sack wanted to go John Wick on everyone's asses for a joke about his wife. If you go up, that, that, that was apparently he say and never been said. You go up to someone's daughter, a maid boss's daughter, and touch her face and make those remarks? Bro, as if Phil does not, that's a, Phil's head is so far up his ass and his crew. Like, I'm talking in terms of like the mafia side of things, in terms of the game. Like, like strictly from a mafia perspective. This rule book, like I said, man, oh, you guys agree with me, right? In terms of like that Coco guy had it coming to him. Like mafia rules, right? Like, come on. He's like he didn't die. Held back. By me, huh? Doesn't every parent make mistakes? Why not you? Because I'm a good guy. Basically. <laughs> Sorry. I love my family. There's a balance. There's a yin and a yang. Notice how Melfi has been looking at Tony a little bit differently now. Ever since Elliot broke that off. And she's think trying you know, to... You think you I feel like read the cues something. about the sociopath. And like the talking, what validating the their mindset. You know why? She almost looks as if she's disappointed. All right. She's given up. When I was in Las Vegas, I took peyote. Curiosity, I don't know. <laughs> you were searching for something. Well, I saw some things. Not things per se, hallucinations, Roger Corman shit. <laughs> it was kind of disappointing. There wasn't any of that. What was there? It's kind of hard to describe. I mean, you've done it, right? Acid, shit like that? No. no. <laughs> That's as far as I'm going to go with it. I, I don't fucking know. Alternate universes? Are you gonna be a fucking comedian now? I'm not. Multiverse, maybe? Maybe. This is gonna sound stupid. But I saw at one point that our mothers are. the bus drivers. But no, they are the bus. See, they're the vehicle that gets us here. They drop us off and go on their way. They continue on their journey. 
And the problem is that we keep trying to get back on the bus. That's a bit flawed. Of just letting it go. I feel like that's a bit flawed. That's very insightful. Jesus, don't act so surprised. But I feel like he has that thought right there because he never had that connection with his mother. She never raised him the way a typical mother would raise their child. That's my opinion. Like I feel like you're always on the bus with your mother through life if you have a good relationship with your mother. She's always there for you. Like that bus is always there to um like that bus is always available she's always there she nurtures you on the bus throughout life and then when it's time for you to become an adult or like i feel like um i'm spinning tony's analogy but when it's time for you to you know go off um create your own life and do that i feel like your mother's always raised you like your mother your parents have raised you to be that way um and it, it, it's, a, it's a two person it's a two drive bus it's a two wheeled bus no, two, not two wheeled bus it's a two steering wheel bus you got your both parents driving it and they nurture you. Sometimes, obviously, you have one parent, whether it's a father or mother, but they nurture you a certain way. And I feel like, I don't know if it's because the way I'm raised, I feel like that bus or that parent should always be available throughout life. Not you should try to get back on it. It's just always there. It should always be available to you. Um, unless, like, obviously, there's some circumstances where, um, like, obviously... If your parents pass away and stuff like that. But there should always be a family member or someone very close to you that's driving that bus, if that makes sense. That is that that bus is always available. It's an like it's an, it's a twenty four seven bus. It's always available for you to hop back on. But like Tony's logic is a bit flawed here because of the way or because of the type of mother he had. I love this show. <laughs> someone clipped that. I love this show. <laughs> have these thoughts and, and you almost grab it and then butch how are you phil is not accepting visitors shut right? your ass up just butch. talk to him on the phone butch well i just talked to him in person he ain't seeing nobody what's going on butch i just brokered this thing he came here to make a peace offering a semi-trail of drills makita's we don't want your fucking drills. Fuck it. Let's go. I like Little Carmine for standing by with Tony a little bit. Like, I, I actually respect Little Carmine a lot. Yeah, he might be stupid with his, um, you know, wording and stuff like that. But he had the most insightful right, thing to say on the show. Back. Go back to New Jersey. Phil, what are you doing? Take that piece of shit and get off my stoop. But we just talked about this. Well, cooler heads prevail. Uncle Philly. Uncle Philly, my ass. Will you just come down so we can discuss this? There's nothing left to discuss, S Carmine. Snipe him. Snipe him. I don't understand. Why is he like this? Yo, YouTube fam, this is Ellie Moses right after the video. Like, this is future Ellie Moses, but I'm talking about the scene right here, and there's something I missed. I thought I discussed it in my reaction, but looking back at the video now, I didn't. It's the scene right here, right now, you're watching with Phil Leotardo um, in sort of like the Norman Bates mother type, or the Norman Bates position, um, you know, being that shadowy um, silhouette figure at the top of the house or in the second level. Um, that's what it really reminded me of, that psycho Norman Bates type figure. But at the same time, it also reminds me of um, one of the episodes. I think it was the third episode this season. I'm not too sure. When Tony had the other dream when he visited the house, um, you know, that purgatory type house when he heard um, the, you know, the cries of his daughter in the bushes. And then obviously the shadow figures sort of at the night sort of party in that white house um, with Livia as well. That shadowy figure of Livia as well. Um, and then you had that episode with Tony as well in the uh, one of the dream episodes where he's sort of like the farmer's boy and he goes up um, and sees that, you know, that horror-like shadow figure of Livia and she walks up the stairs or she's on the stairs um, per se. And yeah, I just find it like really, really um, interesting that Phil's on the second level as well in this one. So just another thought um, that I thought I said I mentioned in the video, but like I didn't and I just thought about it now. So yeah, I'm sorry to put it right here, but yeah, it's Ellie, same Arsenal shirt. So it's like literally right after. Yeah, take it. Hey, Listen. Sleeping beauty. I didn't sleep a wink. I know, I just 
just got all this stress at work. It's cool. It happens to a lot of people. Oh, Abraham Lincoln? Absolutely. And the Lincoln sandwiches he had during the episode? Kind of insomnia, at least a few nights a week. We just want you back. Two episodes to go? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's badass. That's a badass ending. Antone. <laughs> I can't stand Phil, man. He's actually really, really pissing me off. I cannot stand the guy in terms of like, yeah, when it's for him, when his cousin died, fair enough, obviously he's deservedly angry at being shot at and his cousin being killed um, by, obviously, um, Tony Blandetto. But, like, I just feel like if it was pre that, maybe Phil would have been a bit more reasonable. But I feel like, brother, like, there should be some understanding and reasoning, especially, I'm surprised we didn't see Tony's crew reaction to that sort of situation with Meadow, like the reaction from them. Um, Cause I feel like Paulie sees Meadow as a daughter or like not a surrogate daughter, but like in a way, like it's like his little niece. Um, we only saw Patsy's reaction and his initial thought was, oh, the wedding bells are ringing. Like, come on, man. Like we should be on our ass all going to New York as a group. And I just feel like that just goes to show how disjointed the mob is this season or like the ma the mafia side like of New Jersey is this season how disjointed they are it, you, you've seen it like Tony talking to Bobby about business deals excluding Chris stuff like that Chris and Paulie like it's yeah like it's all disjointed it's a massive mess at the moment and there's too much free reigns there's nothing like being kept there's no individuals being kept in check um and it's like a ticking time bomb listen there's two episodes left and i wouldn't be surprised if it all goes to shits and i feel like it is um look at phil at the end there taking the coward's way out baby you know hiding up in your tower um or ha hiding up in your house or freaking butcher's house whatever and not coming down and confronting tony yourself um yeah i feel like deep down phil should understand like bro you you're one of your boys wet to tony soprano's daughter i made boss's daughter and made her fear for her life and made those sexual disgusting remarks about her like get that get your head out of your own even butch too you little le yes man oh they're so frustrating like i'm just talking about the mafia side of things i hope you guys enjoy my reaction as always been your brother moses take care god bless and peace man